And it's my immense pleasure to be with you at this convocation starting the 325th year of the academic life at the College of William and Mary in Virginia. It gives me great joy to be here to see these new, fresh, strong minds come to be part of this historic family of scholars. When you come to the College of William and Mary in Virginia, you basically leap into the flow of history. Right up the road is where the first permanent English settlement in the New World was established. Right up the road is where the first representative government, the House of Burgesses, was established in 1619. And right up the road is where the first boatload of black people in bondage were brought to America just weeks apart from where democracy was started. I have never been able to get it out of my mind that the American schizophrenia with regard to race and fairness was born right up the road from in my state from this beautiful college. And it becomes part of the things that you think about when you are here. But then, at this very place, on that street that the students lovingly call Dog Street, the great architects of American democracy got together. Whether they went to school here or not, they went to the taverns on that street to talk about how to change the form of government of America, how to create a society where all people are created equal. But of course, in creating that society, they didn't start out living by all the things that they said. It was just 50 years ago that people of color were allowed to come here as students in this 300 and some year march of education, but it occurred. It occurred because of the perseverance and determination and strong shoulders and the grit of these people, these women right here that you can see and touch. And so I wanna tell you that history is not just from a long time ago. History is happening right now. And so when the president of the university calls for convocation, he is doing something that has been done for many centuries in the world of education, where the leader of the institution invokes convocatio. And what he says at that moment is, I want the whole college. I want all the faculty, the students, the administrators, the staff to come to one place so that we can discuss and think about some important ideas. And the important ideas that I think that I want you to have in your mind on this your first day is about history and future. That history is happening right now, history is moving forward, and history can be made and changed by all of you right here. And part of what we do at the College of William and Mary is to try to prepare you to make those changes. We are a great liberal art school, but you know, I dislike so much of what is lost in when, when people say liberal arts, because that doesn't describe what's really going on. Some of you who studied classics may know this already. The arts liberales are not arts in the sense of painting and ballet and poetry. And the liberales is not liberal in the sense of liberal and conservative. I wish that we had said what it really was and told all the students and parents what it really is. Because if you knew that the arts liberales were the skills of freedom, who would not want to go to school to learn the skills of freedom? But that's what you come here for. Thousands of years ago, the Greeks figured it out. If you're going to have a representative democracy, then you have to have citizens who know the skills of freedom. And they were talking about logic, grammar, rhetoric. You have to be able to think well, to write well, and to speak well. Today, people call it critical thinking and some other fancy terms. But when you are at William and Mary, every class you go into, every discussion group when you sit on the floor in the dorm, every time that you are engaging with others, you are supposed to be about the business of learning the skills of freedom. 
Because if you don't learn and you don't understand the things that it takes in order to engage with a democratic society and help make it a more perfect union, then the government itself may fail. But the Greeks knew a little bit more than just those structural things. They knew that you had to know some substance too. And so the first three were called the trivium. And then they went to the quadrivium. And that was their view of the structure of the world. Some of you who know this will understand that they thought structurally that you needed to study math. And then you needed to study geometry, which they call math in space. And then you needed to discover, uh, study music, which they call math in time. And then you needed to study astronomy, which they call math in time and space. They were right on. There is structure to the world. But they could not fathom, they couldn't understand the elegant folding of the DNA molecule. They did not yet know, though they talked of atomism, they did not know of the deep physics in the quantum state. They did not know about the Higgs boson and up and down spin and quarks and all the elegant things that we have come to know. But they knew that you had to study government. You had to study society. You had to study mankind. You had to study history. You had to do all these things in order to be a prepared student. And that's what we want you to be when you come to the College of William and Mary in Virginia. But why? Why do we want you to do that? Dr. King said in one of his speeches that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But what he did not say was that the, uh, how the ark bends. The ark never bends on its own. The ark of the moral universe won't do anything unless somebody leans into the ark and pushes it. And we hope that if we pay attention to you and you engage with us here, that you will become those who lean into the ark and change it. The very Constitution of the United States begins by saying, in order to form a more perfect union. And so our founding document knows at the outset that when it was written, things weren't perfect, and surely they were not. But it takes time, it takes years, it takes effort, it takes a great push to have a group that looks like this to have a, an assembly where somebody like me can stand here and be part of the society that we are born and raised in. And so we have great hopes on this first day of the academic year for what you will become. But it's not just for you. It's because what we are trying to do is ignite within you the burning desire to learn and to keep learning to push for fairness and justice and equity, and then to share the light that is within you. Indeed, one of the gorgeous ceremonies that you will be part of in your days at the College of William and Mary is called candlelight. When you will stand near this very building and you will share the light from a candle among all your classmates and you will light up this yard. But it's symbolic for what we want you to do in the world because the candle that lights another candle burns no less brightly. Consider that now. If you have the one candle that's lit in a room of a thousand and all the other candles are out, you with your one candle can light the whole room and you lose no brightness by sharing. It is an important concept that I hope stays within you that we want you to be engaged your whole time here. The students who go to this school volunteer at one of the highest rates in the country. The students who go to school here study around the world at a rate higher than most other schools. The students who go here stay up late at night. With, at exam times, we have to open all possible spaces because our students are on the floor in the library and on the floor in the gym and on the floor 
floor on the wrestling mats. They're on the floor anywhere they can be where they can lay down a computer and a book and keep on studying. We have to keep the daily grind open to give y'all coffee almost 24 hours a day. They claim our students can be a little bit nerdish, but our students are just trying to understand, and now you are part of that effort to understand. And so, we want you to get it from the beginning, to understand what you're trying to do, to understand that you are here to be about the business of the skills of freedom so that you can go out and move mountains, so you can change the world, so you can make things better. Now, they tell you that I'm a poet, and I've been that way since I was a baby, since I was four years old, and I actually wrote a poem about light and a poem about sharing. And I'm going to give you that poem right now. My poem is Light the Soul. And I say to you from my poet's heart that light lay quietly at the beginning till it was called into action by God. Then it split the darkness, warmed the cold, brought motion to the stillness, touched our soul. And they say there is light at the end. As we brace ourselves for the final journey, the word is there is light even then. Light that blinds you, binds you, then sets you free. From alpha to omega, the light shines through. From dawn to dusk, it orders what we do. By particle and wave, it prompts the birds to sing. By pulse and reflection, it points out the way. Light can lift depression, dispel despair, bring hope to the weary, lead us from fear. Light can raise up emotions, quiet the storm, beckon us from rolling seas into the calm. We learn by light, we grow by light, we sit in the dark, transfixed by its sight. And as the light flickers, our hearts respond. We can see the connections, we can feel the bonds. It has been given to some to handle the light, to mold it, to craft it, to bend it, to write. It has fallen to some to sculpt what we see, to sharpen, to brighten, to make it run free. To those who would hold light in their hands, there is much to remember, to understand. In the right light, love can shine. In the right light, we can leave wrong behind. By the light, there is good we can know. In the light, justice can grow. To all of you, all of the undergraduates, all of the business students, the law students, the educational students, the VIM students, everybody who's come here to learn, God bless you. Get some light and share it. That's all I know.